Welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking, should you be buying a Tesla with over 100,000 miles on? Now, James's Tesla here has done 170 odd thousand miles and you've had it from new. Yep. And you're the original one owner with all those miles on. Yes. And it's an early Tesla, as we can see, it's a 14 plate Tesla. I conservatively estimate that this is probably something like Tesla number 50, excluding the original Roadsters, of course. Yeah. Because I got it at the end of June, 29th of June, and they, the very first deliveries were at the beginning of June. And back then, they weren't delivering a lot of cars, obviously. No. So this is one of the very early, early ones, pre-autopilot. Yep. Rear wheel drive. So it's just basically a car, which is electric. That's how early your Tesla is. Yes. And... Let's be honest, it's a bit like Trigger's broom. <laughs> right. <laughs> James wasn't ready for that. So it's had a lot. It, it, it's like any car that's done 100,000 miles on. Things have gone wrong and you've repaired them. Okay. So what have you repaired on this 174 okay. miles a mile car? Well, so, okay. It, it's worth noting that because it was such an early car, there were some things that Tesla just didn't do right, right from the word go. Camera. It's also great weather to be stuck outside your car. Yeah. Like the door handles, they ran the wires in a silly way and over time and not a lot of time, the wires would, would break free and the door handles would stop coming out. And that was an early thing. That was like in the first six months, year of having uh, the car. That, within two years, three of the four door handles had had the wiring routed a different way and repaired, sometimes with a whole new uh, door handle unit, sometimes just a rewiring job. And one of them's still original. So the wirings in that particular door handle are obviously particularly robust. So that, that's an interesting thing to note. Then. So anyone who's looking at a 2014, 2015 Tesla with over 100,000 miles on, these problems have been fixed more than likely yeah, unless absolutely. they're very 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 lucky like one of your doors uh, my guess is probably 90 percent of all the testers that are this old have had every single door handle sorted right because it was <laughs> it was an actual design flaw to the point where tesla initially started out saying you know oh we're not going to you know if it's outside the four-year warranty we're not going to fix it and then they were just like no you know what bring it to us we'll fix it okay um i think these days, I wouldn't expect that. So what else has it had? Right, okay, so <laughs> it, it's not that long of a list, really. It, mainly, the big problem I've had with this car has been small animals. Right. It's quite a quiet car, and I tend to drive quite conservatively, but in the dark, you're driving along, there's nothing to stop like a monk jack or a deer sort of diving in front of the car. And sometimes, quite honestly, I've just been unlucky. I was doing 50 in the slow lane, on a big dual carriageway A road and a medium sized deer ran from the fast lane. And this was a busy A road at five in the morning in winter. And it ran from the fast lane into the slow lane directly in front of my car. No time to react, just straight over the deer basically. Um, and that did about 9,000 pounds worth of damage to the front of the car, which is, that was painful. Okay, so, the, the so that's bonnet, not that's the not front Tesla bumper. So that's not Tesla's fault, but no, we've had, not. But we've had a new bumper. Although, hang on, not Tesla's fault, but you've got to factor in if you're going to get an old car like this and you need a new bonnet, you're going to want insurance that provides you with a good replacement car for what could well be three months. Right. Which is how long I had to drive a smart car because my insurance <laughs> did not come with a, a replacement like for like courtesy car. I just had to take whatever the garage had available, which, yeah, this was literally a, a smart for two or for four or whatever it was. I don't know. It was awful. I felt like I was driving around in a tin can. Sorry to anyone who loves smart cars, <laughs> but it's it was too small for it's, me. It's too small for Compared person, to a but, Tesla. I thought he was going to say compared to small Nick. <laughs> it, it was it, too small for anybody. But, yeah, so that's not Tesla's fault. So you've had two, no. a new bumper, new front bonnet. New radiator. New radiator. Um, we're getting more and more like triggers. I had, here. I, I stopped, yes, I stopped at one of those traffic calming measures that they kindly, you know, they, they handily have. And I think it was one of those things where I was sort of thought about going. So the car rolled forward like a foot or two. And then I thought, no, the car coming the other way is going too quick. And I put my foot on the brake and the guy behind me was, I don't know, looking at his phone, not paying attention. There goes the rear bumper. 
so you've had front bumper, rear bumper, yep. radiators, uh, door handles. Yep. Uh, any interior parts? Yes. So, oh. <laughs> so after about forty thousand miles, there was a sort of a whole thing about people moaning about their drivetrain units, and sort of they were starting to make a bit more noise than they should do, or maybe you get a clunk when you put it into reverse. This was one of those another early design floor kind of issues that Tesla then admitted and said, yeah, we'll just sort that out. And it basically just needed a little shim of metal that sort of went inside where the reduction gear was. Right. And it stopped it from basically digging a hole through the metal casing was what was happening as you went from uh, from drive to reverse. Right. Basically. Because there's a lot of force, you know, going through that reduction gear. You know, these are enormously powerful motors that push... 2.2 ton cars up to 60 in in my case five and a half seconds because this is the slowest tesla that they've ever made which you know says something when the slowest one is five and a half seconds to 60 but yeah so uh there was this spate of this going on and i thought to myself can i hear a noise maybe so i mentioned it to tesla you know maybe it's making more noise than it did when it was brand new because i didn't want to miss out on the new drivetrain thing that was going around i certainly didn't want to have an old drivetrain with a design flaw and tesla basically just said without any you know qualms at all yeah bring it in they took a look and said we'll stick a new one in okay so, so it's, it's got so, a whole new drivetrain at forty thousand miles so new drivetrain new front bumper new radiator new rear bumper new bonnet new door handles well that's surely it james no not quite <laughs> okay so when i got to i think it was about 165,000 miles 164,000 miles the i went to the car and I, I i turned i tried to turn it on and it just said luckily this happened when i was at home not when i was off around the country somewhere it just said no battery fault high voltage battery fault we don't want to we're not going anywhere stopped working basically completely and there was some bms errors on the screen and then it wouldn't start or it wouldn't start straight away and the next day the screens didn't come on but it would unlock and the day after that it wouldn't even unlock right because obviously the high voltage battery was no longer topping up the 12 volt right which just meant the whole car completely bricked okay so it had a new battery a new drivetrain battery yeah a whole new high voltage battery right so how how old and what mileage was that on that was about 164,000 miles and this is the kicker, right? So I've been babying this battery since I had it, basically. You know, never going below 30%, very rarely charging it to 100%, never leaving it at 100% if I do. And the battery died on me at eight years and three months. So if I'd had three more months of like, if I'd, if I'd worn it out slightly earlier, the battery would have been free on warranty. Right. So there's my advice. Don't baby test the batteries. <laughs> they did say that when I bought the car, they said, don't worry about the battery, just drive it. If I'd done that, they'd have done the battery for free. So you, right, we'll get to the price of the battery in a minute, but let, let's just note the important part here. Uh, Top Gear says they normally die after five years, so you manage to get an extra couple of years out of it. Oh, yeah, and that's they, not And they also say they die at 50,000 miles. You've got 100,000 miles more almost. Yeah. So Over 100,000. 100, yeah. It was 164, I think. Now, compare this to a petrol car. Yep. 170, 100, sorry, 150, was it the battery went? 100 and, yeah, 160. 160. So no, some, some petrol cars, some diesel cars, you know, they can go that long, but it's a rarity rather than a, you know, a, 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 an always going to happen. So that would normally be an engine rebuild, timing change snaps. So that it's a catastrophic failure that's not common that happens to the battery. Yeah. You know, it's not a common issue. But the big question is this, is everyone wants to know how much, what... So how much did Tesla want to charge in full? And then we'll get to the little, uh, little, <laughs> right. the, the little quirk that you have about yeah, that. Yeah, so I, it would have cost £14,000. And is that a new battery? Nope, that is a refurbished battery and you are not keeping the old one. So, so that's, that one. that's them taking the old battery on, yep. swapping it, refurbishing, yep. putting, getting a battery off the shelf that's refurbished and giving you the refurbished battery back. Yep. So is there any guarantees of the refurbished battery state of health? So there's no, what they try to do is they try to match the range and state of health that your battery had when they take it in. Right. So if you could do 200 miles before, you should be able to do 200 miles after. Okay. What they, what they also do though, is they give you a four year, 50,000 mile warranty on that battery repair. Okay, that's, that's quite impressive. 
well that's what i was told i'm not <laughs> i might have to check to the paperwork to be 100 percent sure but that is what they told me is okay. that it came with that which is one of the things that made me feel comfortable getting the battery swapped because for fourteen thousand pounds to have that to, to effectively have a car that should carry on for another 40,000 miles yeah. and uh, sorry another four years or 50,000 miles that is you know I mean 14,000 pounds wouldn't get me a car this good if I went to the market and bought one no and then it could come with a bunch of costs four years down the line that I wasn't expecting you know, uh, engines uh, fail all the time and then there's another thing to work into you didn't pay 14,000 pounds which we'll get to in no. a minute <laughs> but if you went to say someone like an independent Hevra garage I mean a lot of people who I know said you know why don't you go to Cleveland which we'll get to in a minute but if we went to say an independent like that did you get a price of what they might have charged to repair I didn't okay. I just got it all I've, I've had everything that's happened to this car has been dealt with by Tesla okay and initially that was because I quite honestly didn't trust anybody else to touch the car yeah. and i think that was probably sensible because your average garage like i just get this car mot'd at the local garage now i stay with the car and if i didn't stay with the car it would get jacked up in the wrong place yeah half the mot test points would either be missed yeah. or you know which actually wouldn't make any difference because it passes no problem but you know the, the, you can't blame the garages it's a relatively unusual car and it's a relatively unusual tesla as well yeah. they can't they, but there's a they lot can't more, find the option there's a lot more specialist carriers than these now i mean there's, that's true there's that's one true. thing worth noting there's a lot more specialists. yeah but now. do you want to do that or do you want to get it mot'd at the local yeah but but i mean the specialist garages that are around matt matt, matt cleveley cleavey or another heavy garage could have probably repaired that battery now we don't know yeah. what price because you didn't get one at the time and obviously you didn't check it you weren't with tesla and would now, they give you a warranty though probably not a warranty so so the price would be <clears throat> probably correspondingly less because of that but you went to tesla at, but you didn't pay fourteen thousand. no no i i didn't for, for me it was it was obvious that i was always going to go with tesla because of my youtube channel i had quite a substantial amount of tesla referral credit which when set against the price of the battery brought it down to just under one and a half thousand pounds which you know that makes it a no-brainer yeah to be honest one and a half thousand pound you couldn't buy a second hand car for never mind not when you'd want to drive anyway yeah so one one and a half grand so that, that's why you didn't shop around for prices because at yeah. one and a half grand it was a no-brainer yeah absolutely. and the four-year warranty for one and a half grand most people would pay one and a half grand to have a four-year warranty absolutely. you got a battery and a four-year warranty at that yeah absolutely and I would just like to say, I mean, okay, so I have had quite a lot of stuff repaired on the car, but at the same time, it fundamentally drives like it did when it was new. It still goes like it used to. It still regens like it used to. It still has the same sort of feel and, you know, the way yeah. it sits on the road. It's, you know, yeah, I mean, it's been great. Much like, uh, hold on, James. Here much, the broom analogy Much like this again. broom, yeah, it's the same broom which only had uh, 15 heads, two new handles, um, a new new stocking candle here. There's only two, but this is a completely original uh, rush. Yeah, yeah. from the 70s. Yeah, yeah, it's complete. But I mean, it, if taking all that apart, what Tesla obviously have done to this car? If you think it's a 2014 car, most of the stuff you've had repaired was been free. It was under warranty. Yeah. Okay, Tesla from 2014. Or it's to, been a small to, animal, of course. Yeah, or small. But where Tesla is now, compared to where they were, is a completely different place. Now, if you just look at where they were in 2014, they managed to make this battery last 150,000 miles. Yeah. Which is... Which is very impressive. Which is very impressive. And it wasn't... The state of health hadn't failed. It was a, it was more of a, an electronic failure with the battery. I suspect what it was. Basically, they, they did tell me what it was. The onboard computer had detected that one of the battery modules was not holding its state of charge as it should. So it went into safety lockdown mode. Exactly. Right. Um, and my battery that used to be in this car, Tesla had no doubt opened that pack, removed that module, gone through all the cells, tested all of them, probably removed all the other modules, tested all of those, re-put it together, and it's now almost certainly either in somebody else's old Tesla that had a failed battery, or it's waiting to, to have that, you know, yeah. that secondary life. Yeah, well, if you're interested about learning about batteries, then James just covered this video here on his channel. Make sure you subscribe to James. He's been doing YouTube for so long that he's the reason I bought an EV. And apparently a house too. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, James. Thank you very much. It's been great chatting.